Let's open the operator start button. Listen to the operator start twice. Robot now moved over to the end fixture. Let's pick up the line. Brings it over to the assembly fixture and puts it in the front. Now I'll go back and get another one. Robot will now pick up the staple gun and get a slat from the slat feeder. Robot will now put the slat on the two ends. Robot will now pick up another slat. And I'll put the staple gun back in its holder and flip the fixture over. Pick up the staple gun again and get another splat to the other side. The robot will now pick up another splat. Bring it over to the assembly section. And I'll set the super gun down and pick up the bottom of the rack. You My name is Brad Haskin. Vince Toko. Sean Wellens. This is our 1996 automated work cell, which would make CD racks. our work cell, we have two very important things. We have a light curtain, which will activate the alarm, and all light switches. And we have two physical barriers, one on this side, and one on this side. Safety, you also have an emergency stop button, which when depressed, operates the alarm and switches the light. And we also have various signs throughout the work cell. Our bottom fixture. It just holds the bottoms until the robot is ready to pick them up and put them in the CD rack. This is our stamp fixture. It holds the stamp in place by a cylinder and the limit switch verifies its position. This is our end feeder. It uses the cylinder to extend an end out, then the limit switch verifies when it's extended. The 
This is our slat feeder. This is a 12 inch cylinder to extend out a slat, which is verified by a fiber optic photoelectric. The other fiber optic verifies that there's enough slats in the feeder to be extended. This is our testing station. It uses a photoelectric, and the beam is broken. It verifies if there's a slide or a bottom there. This is our staple gun fixture. It holds the staple gun in place by a cylinder and is verified by prox in the back. The staple gun consists of a cylinder to fire it off whenever needed. This is our assembly fixture. It uses four cylinders to keep it in position, two for the upright position and two for the upside down position. It has two cylinders to hold the ends in place when they're placed in here. And they are verified by two limit switches. The position of the assembly fixture, whether it's upside, down, or whatever, is verified by two limit switches on each of the cylinders. This is our control panel. It consists of three buttons and three lights. Each of the lights determines if the slats are empty, if the assembly fixture is up or down. The buttons are for operator start, cycle stop, and emergency stop. We have a pressure regulator and a gauge. Then we have the emergency shutoff valve on top. We monitor valve board on the side of a robotic cell for easy access to the solenoids and the wires. And this is our air input with the, with the shutoff right here. This is this is this is our uh, relay board which leads down by two wires down to our two main wires down to our control panel. The robot controller. This concludes our 1996 automated work set for CD Rex. This is a CD Rex. <laughs> You're done now, Miller. God damn it. This concludes our 1996 yeah, automated work cell for CD-RAMs.